thanks a lot. A squirrel? Why do you think I look like a squirrel? I'm a little squirrel in the tree this morning. It looked a little bit like you. You're weird. Are you going to do it? What? Okay, what? What do we do at the beginning of every show? Well, you haven't said it yet. I don't go first. You do? Oh, I guess I do go first. Yes, you. Ah! Oh, good <laughs> lord. This is going to be interesting. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I'm Mum. I'm me. That's Bert. And that makes three. And we got that out <laughs> after some coaching. <laughs> okay, so we are, from the last episode, we were leaving, bugger me, I can't think of where we were leaving. Oh, Nebraska. Oh, and the Sioux Falls. So yeah. that's what we were talking about last time. Anyway, we are, as, actually, we should talk a little bit. We always said we were going to talk about where we were. But first, we're, today we're going to talk about Philadelphia, New York, um, yep. friends, uh, birthdays, uh, not friends, family. We talked about friends last time. Ithaca. Right? And then Cummins, because we did a lot of repairs. We're going to talk about a little bit about that. And then... Uh, that's it, right? That's actually a lot. We've got a lot of photos. He's got Cornell. Two pages of stuff. See, I'm following Jason's Jason, our friend, uh, advice on keeping notes. We keep on track, so we're trying to do better with that. And, and last, I've got my cocoa. And I have my toast to Nana. Here's to Nana. To Nana. That's B and B. Um, anyway, so we left. Uh, I guess we should wait for our credits first. So here's the credits. Okay, so getting back to the show, we left Sioux Falls, we talked about that, and we started really, oh, no, it was Indianapolis we left, because that's where we were talking about our friends there. So we left Indianapolis, and then we, we started traveling through to uh, Philadelphia, which, have you been to Philadelphia prior to this? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. When? When John and I arrived in... New Jersey, we got our new car and we were we went through. So share a little bit about that. Because you landed in America, it was your second round, correct? Yeah. And then you 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 got a car. We got a new Ford station wagon. The boat. Yeah. And. Um, We picked it up at, at the port in New Jersey. And was it waiting for you, or did you buy it when you got here? No, we bought it in England. Did you ship it here, or, or you just arranged it to be... The Air Force shipped it here for us. Oh, so you physically bought it in England, and they shipped it. We bought it online, I think, in England. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was. Did you pay cash for that? Are you kidding? I don't know. We had not two beans to rub together for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. It was, uh, no, we, we picked up the car and we had got uh, four kids and one dog that we had was, brought over. Which one was that? That was the one that bit you. I, I don't remember because you got rid of the dog right after it bit me, but <laughs> I don't remember the name of the dog. I'm not it, sure I do either. It King, was a King, poodle. It wasn't King. No. no. Oh, bugger me. One of my brothers will know when they're watching this. They're going to be speaking out loud going, it's this dog. 
anyway, we, uh, we traveled through Pennsylvania and it was not as beautiful as it was for us when we went this time. Right. Well, it, when did you, you landed in summertime, right? Yeah. Because you came at, well, no, I guess it would have been fall. Oh, no, it would have been winter because, yeah, it would have been December-ish. No. Because it, it... It was autumn. Okay. So you ended up landing in New Jersey. You started your trip, and you had four boys and a dog and you two. And then did you you slept in the car most of the time, right? And All they, the time we had... Um, almost literally no money because the Air Force doesn't pay you until you get to where you're going. So. And that's that stipend? Yeah. To the we travel had stipend? We stipend. Um, so we were eating... A lot of you will remember the cereal that you could get and it was all in little boxes in a big pack and that was their breakfast. And then we had enough money for the kids to have either a hot dog or a hamburger for lunch like and a John and I would punt. We wouldn't have anything at that point. And then uh, for dinner we would, I would try to make sandwiches and so on. And um, then we traveled across America in that car. So the only place, well I know one place you stayed was my dad's family lived in near the uh, the name of the city just went out of my head. It was in Racine, Wisconsin. Racine, that's it. Which I went there on my travels with Spencer. Yeah. But you stayed at their house, your in-laws' house. Right. For one evening only, right? Just about because the uh, stepfather, John's stepfather, twisted Keith's arms behind his back and made him cry and that you don't hurt my kids ever so next we day all, we left. anybody with a kid recognizes that sentiment yeah yeah so we left but you also it wasn't terribly clean right wasn't that the part was oh also, no they were they were clean oh that yeah. was somebody else's house then. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was the people in california's house oh yeah see i know bits and pieces of these stories but i get them confused as to which one goes where oh Anyway, so then we traveled across and landed in California in Nevada, North yes. Bay, San Francisco. Hamilton Air Force Base. And that's where my biggest memory from that is being in the hospital all the time with my lungs, yep. which I hated it. It was horrible. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was your second time being in Philadelphia then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we now, what was your biggest memory from this trip? in Philadelphia, like uh, without talking about just stuff, not people. We were there in the changing of the colors of the trees and it was absolutely spectacular. It was so beautiful, breathtaking almost, you know. For me, that was the prettiest spot of all the season changes. Yeah, yeah the freeways there and I tried desperately to get pictures every time I tried to get pictures because it also wasn't terribly changing yet like it was spots of changing because it had kind of a warm fall right yeah so we didn't get the full brunt of the season change we got bits and pieces of it we got enough for us to know that if you're going to go see the color changes you better start with Pennsylvania yeah what happened is every time I'd try to get a video or you would try by the time we got the camera out, we had put, gone past it. Yeah. But the thing that blew my mind was the colors in Pe Pennsylvania specifically were pastels. Yeah. I'm used to I'm used to the colors being burgundies and burnt orange and golden yellow. Oh, and they were pale they pinks were, and pale blues and, and lavender. Pale and greens and lavender. Yeah, it was. It was colors I didn't know you could have. I didn't like know. Peach. I didn't know that. Uh, leaves could go those colors yeah. absolutely gorgeous yeah it was it, i think that's probably why we were so enamored because we talked about it for miles but i think we were so enamored because it was just not what we expected right so the, the sum of that is really make sure that if you're going to do it make sure to get through the northwest edge of pennsylvania because that's where we noticed it 
the most, but we were heading to Pennsylvania. Really, it was planned for a while, but it took a while to execute that it happening. But my oldest brother's, I'm not going to use his name, but my oldest brother's best friend growing up still still lives there. And I don't remember a world, a life without him. Like as far back as I can remember, Scott was part of our family and um, loved Scott and Carlin. So we got to go visit them and see where they're at. But in the meantime, we had kind of talked about it with my oldest brother when we were in California. But then as we were traveling, we were waiting for kind of the connection. And it was just a a couple days prior is when we finally were able to get hold of him because I didn't know how to reach him. Right. And my oldest brother got us connected, and we got to go to their house and have lunch with them um, at their, I guess you call it a farm homestead? Yeah, it's got, I think, about 20 acres, I think. It, it's big yeah. and beautiful. But that's the next thing. So I've seen animated GIFs of season changing, and I've always wondered why they put snow in these animated pictures of, of the season change. Well, we were sitting on their in their back patio where, where the four of us are talking and we're sharing old, you know, old time history and what they've been doing and get, getting caught up on their kids and them and, you know, there's stuff with church and their, pro, their work and all that stuff. And I'm sitting there looking out their back window at their fall colors, which was more of the burnt, burnt colors, but I was like, it was like a soft snow. Every time a breeze came through, I'd never seen it before. So I didn't, California doesn't have that where I was, where I was raised. So all of a sudden a breeze would come through and these leaves would just, Peppers. hundreds of them just gently fall to the ground like a snowfall. Yeah. And I was like, that has got to be one of the most beautiful things I've ever, remember I was like, I've never seen that before. It was I was stunned at how beautiful it was. Yeah. So, for me also, that kind of made me realize that in order to appreciate it, you need to actually plan, if you do a trip like that for fall colors, plan some times where you're eating outside and you can actually just sit and be quiet because you're not going to notice the breeze and the leaves falling and it looking like snow unless you slow down and stop. Right. It, you can't just be driving everywhere and you don't get that when you're driving. No. You don't see mm -hmm. It happens, but you don't see it. So, that was for me the most memorable part part memorable part of the season change i was flabbergasted but now scott and carlin so scott like i said he's been in my life as long as i can remember but you've got a lot of good stories with him like so they did which trail did they hike keith and oh, scott and I can't carlin remember the name of it but it was going from where to where in california and it's from southern california and it just goes all the way up. To Canada. I think it goes to Canada. They didn't make it to Canada, but they had too many blisters. So you, what were you doing as part of that trip? My job was to buy the dry, dehydrated food and ship it to their next area where they were going to be. So I was shipping ahead of... Um, of their actual trail. They had a dog with them. It they was, did? Yeah. Oh, that's right. They're Scott's Scott and dog. Carlin's dog. Yeah. And um, it was great. And then I got this frantic request for a lot of moleskin because they huh. had all got blisters. Like bad. And uh, Keith's were especially bad. I think Carlin and, and Scott probably had better shoes or better fitting shoes or good socks, I don't know. But anyway, that was uh, the last package that I shipped, they never got because they Somebody had, did. No. The, somebody somebody did. did, yeah. But it was, um, they had had enough and they were coming home. I think they had some deadlines that they were trying to meet, college and or whatever. Um, but they had a fabulous time, but their feet, Keith's feet were so sore. It was... Your oldest son? Yeah, yeah. It was... 
Yeah, and they've been... Pathetic. My oldest brother and Scott and all of them, they've hiked all over the place. All over California, not just that trip. That wasn't the only one that they did. No, they, they were always together. Um, very dear friends. They still are. They, they, um, I think, I think they can't imagine their life without each other. I'm well, pretty sure that's the way it is. Well, they, I can't imagine them not being a part of Keith's lives. Right. It was, uh, it was amazing, um, the friendship that they had. We were at, the, in fact, we were talking about their wedding, because I remember their wedding like it was yesterday. I remember all the details of it, but. And, it, and that was part of this, you know, the what we wanted to talk a little bit about is your your friends are huge, they're important, they're people you get to pick, but your family you don't get to pick. And how important it is, I've had so many friends lately who have situations where they're, are you hot, Bert? Bert panting. Um, it's not that cold out. It's it maybe 70 right now. It's yeah. comfortable with the fire pit, but yeah. um, we're in Texas right this minute but filming this. But he's had enough. Yeah. Well, he'll be there for a while. Um, but we had a, we've had so many friends lately that have been struggling with their family members and not yeah. treating each other well. And you know, I was thinking about it. Your friends, we tend to keep kind of more courtesy with our friends than we do family you know and we are then what we do is and i know i do this to you but sometimes i'm not as courteous with you as i should be just because your family and we somehow think we can get away with more with our family or but at the same token like i will tell you uncle tony my mom's brother actually said this to me when i was a teenager when i was visiting england for the summer he said to me that I was doing my mum an incredible disservice because I had, you know, as a little as a little boy, I idolized my mum. I idolized my nana. Um, I I had put my mum on such a pedestal that there's no possible way you could live up to what I had in my head that you were. Very true. So we somehow sometimes with family think that because they're our family that they're going to love us and they're going to treat us well no matter what because they're family. Well, that's not true. Like they, they need, they deserve sometimes more courtesy than other people because they put up with more from us. You know, you, we have to, as family, ideally, you want to be there for each other no matter what. And like right now, the family unit is a bit broken in society, isn't it? Yeah, I think actually we are more fortunate than most. Um, and it might be because we've got distance between us and we don't get to aggravate one another all the time. Um, Gary was our closest. He's the youngest, uh, my youngest sibling. Yeah. And, um, but then there's the other two boys that are in northern california and we just don't see them that often and then my sister she's in england yeah so you know i was actually just chatting with her the other day you know getting updates on them but that's the thing is proximity ends up sometimes breeding contempt but I'll, i gotta tell you from a family perspective and i you know how i feel about this is i've always envied like asian cultures they stick together no matter what they, they will work together as one unit until every single person in that unit is well cared for so i actually appreciate that honor that they give each other because honor is a big deal to the asian cultures at the same time when you were younger like your 21st birthday how many people were at your birthday party about 150 and they were all relatives <laughs> right but yeah. they were and they were all from a fairly close proximity yeah. and you all knew each other so my grand cook which is your grandmother on my mother my nana's side so your mother's mother would get busloads of people together and she'd bring them all in and you had yeah. big your celebrations were not little celebrations no they were massive and that but it was all family so I always felt like I missed out on that. Like, cause I don't know what that feels like. I mean, it was just us in California. We didn't have family over there. 
So if I did see family, it was one or two people coming over at a time. And, you know, that was, or, you know, we'd have to go there and then we'd see. A, so I got to tell you, so you all know that we do Boxing Day. This is why we do Boxing Day. In England, on Boxing Day, which is always the day after Christmas, so it's December 26th, I guess they pick people that are going to be the hosts, and then family members go from house to house to no, house. No, they just go from house to house to house. <laughs> but they they all have a drink at each house, yeah. and they're walking because you're not going to be able to drive by the end. That's very true. And the, all of the leftovers of Christmas are all out on all the tables. Yep. And, you know, they're like we went to a Christmas celebration at Susan and Tim's house in Long Sutton, and they had... Quite literally, Father Christmas came in on a sleigh. I don't remember. It was pulled by horses or donkeys or something. I can't remember. But I, it was a big bloody deal. And so you you celebrate big time. And there's so many people. And England pretty much closes down from Christmas Eve until the day after New Year's. Right. And if you're wondering why it's called Boxing Day, this is totally not what we were going to talk about. No. But Boxing Day, in in a castle, you know the 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 staff and the town really are all serving the the guests of the castle on Christmas Day. So all that food that they make is served to the to the castle guests, and the next day all of it is spread out for all the staff of the various levels in the castle. And then the owners or the the masters of the staff served the stuff yes which was kind of special right and then what they would do is they would box up gifts for the staff you know we're talking shoes clothing toys anything that yep. the families that worked for them needed for the next year however long yeah and they would they would serve them like they were royalty yeah you know so yeah it was that day became more commonly celebrated for commoners which we are. We are. As much as some of our family <laughs> wouldn't want to admit that, we are commoners. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was, it, that day became very precious to me, which is why I have a boxing, this last boxing day, for those of you who didn't see an invite, we had in, intended to have a boxing day party, and I've been doing it for ever, for a long time, and we didn't do it strictly because you were feeling ill, you well, know, or we you were no recovering. Space. The space was limited, yeah. trying to organize it. It was just, we were overwhelmed with health and proximity and logistics. So we didn't do our Boxing Day party truly for the first time in years. At, at, like almost a decade and a half yeah, or two decades. I yeah. mean, a lot, long, long time. So that's why we didn't do it. So if you felt left out because we didn't invite you, we didn't have one at all. So we weren't invited either. <laughs> but... Um, the family thing in England was such a big deal. And that's another thing is, in England, if somebody was down and out, the family was there, and they took care of each other. I mean, I remember when Gran Cook was struggling with her house, and you know when she could hear again, which we talked about that in a previous episode, I don't remember which episode it was, but everybody went running through there to be able to talk to them so she could hear people's voices she'd never heard before. I mean. She'd never heard my voice, and I'd, unless they played a tape for her, she never did. No. Which they might have, I don't know. But it was a family was family is really there for you in England. They take care of you, and but that doesn't come without expectations either. But you also will not find, at least in our family, a member of our family in an extended care home. Right. We take care of our own in our own houses. Whichever one of us has got proximity to the sick person or has room for that person to come and live. We like take care of each other. Greg drew the short straw in Gladly. getting care of his mummy. <laughs> I didn't I didn't draw the short straw, I demanded the short straw. Because I've yeah. said my whole life I was gonna do this. Yeah you did. Uh, and that's the that's the there's a joy in, in knowing that people are taken care of and that you can rest in that, yeah. in being, yeah. ta know that you're going to be okay. And I, um, I don't know, there's, there's a lot to be said for taking care of each other and being there for each other. But in America, 
families go off and leave they go to other states and there's a weakness that that creates because like people have always said oh I'm not going to help my kid they got to stand on their own two feet which I agree to a point but I don't want my son to have to start from ground zero I want him to learn from my mistakes and stand on my shoulders and start from there I will tell you one thing there's not going to be any money left in my bank account as my there last be check is going to bounce <laughs> that there is as it should be yeah like you shouldn't a parent a parent doesn't need to save their money no. for their kid no but you know each to their own anyway so moving on we were from scott and carlin so at their house they had a like 150 year old barn i think it was that they've revamped and it's cleaned up and it's beautiful their property is beautiful it is peaceful open air green is all get out even though it was changed the the fall colors were in the trees, but not in the grass. It was beautiful. Yep. And they've got these a huge field of solar panels. And then they've got um, artwork that they do and a lot of mechanical stuff he works on. And, yep. and they're, it was neat, really neat catching up with them because I've missed them a lot. And they gave us some dry, sun-dried, or not sun-dried, but dehydrated tomatoes, which we've been using along the way, which, oh, they're so good. Lovely. So it it's was fun. Just lovely. So from there, we and we continued on up to Ithaca, which was our, that was the one thing that was a deadline, because Spencer's birthday is in October, so we were trying to make sure to get there early enough to spend some time with him, and we did. So we get there late at night on whatever night it was we got there, towards the beginning of December, or of October, and we parked the RV in a storage unit, which I they were really inexpensive and great to work with because um, there's not a lot of places to store no. an RV. Mm -mm. And then I have to share with you, me, Greg Davis, fixed the air conditioner, <laughs> which we were having major problems with the air conditioner, which is not something in a tin can when it's hot. You don't want no air conditioner. So I had to replace the fan and the blades. The blades actually broke, which is what broke the air conditioner. But I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know anything about air conditioner. And I'm looking at $1,800 for one new one if I have to buy one. And I'm praying to God I don't have to buy one. And I get my butt up there. And she's the master. She, I got, she's a little bit anal on watching weather. I hear weather updates five, six times a day. <laughs> about what time it's going to start raining and what the humidity is and what the temperature is and that it just dropped two temperature two degrees and whatever but she tells me a window of i think i had two hours one day where it didn't rain in, in Ithaca. it rained a lot in ithaca and where there was no wind yeah and so i get up on the roof i go there i get up on the roof i pull the thing apart i literally waited for the moment that you said it was going to stop raining yep right when she said it was going to stop raining is exactly when it stopped raining yep so she's... I'm a genius. Weird. Genie ass <laughs> is what she is. So the genie ass ends up getting my window. I pull the air conditioner top off. I put the fan blade in. I fix the compressor. I rewire the thing. I'm taking care of everything that I should be taking care of. I get it. I get all of it put back together. I go down and I test it and it it worked. It did. Which shocked the heck out of me. And me. Not Holly. <laughs> and a lot of my friends, like yeah. Hal and Joanne Pemberton in Phoenix. Hal was like flabbergasted that I knew how to do air conditioning, which I don't. I just Googled it. Um, but I ended up going, uh, and I do have some video on that, which I will post. But um, I end up getting it, and just as I put the cover on the thing, it starts raining hard. And you'll see in the pictures, I don't have like a jacket on or something because it, it wasn't that cold. No. It was kind of humid, warm. It suddenly got cold. Oh my <laughs> goodness. It was like ice water pouring on me. I was like, how did it go from being warm? And I did work out that morning, so I was actually a little weak in my legs because I did legs that day. I couldn't believe how bloody cold it was. It was ridiculous, and you, she thought it was lovely that I that it happened, but I got drenched at that moment. And but uh, and then my son, he came and he helped me with a bunch of. We got cameras working again. We got lights adjusted because we had a bunch of stuff 
that was still trailing from not being fixed when we got up, got the RV back, yep. which it wasn't the fault of my, my guys that worked on it. It was the fault that there was just a lot of stuff to do. And I got as much done as I could before we traveled because we left a bit early. Are your knees getting hot? Yes. But we got a ton <laughs> of stuff fixed. And my son was great for that. Um, but then, so what was your best part of Ithaca? So now, in case you guys don't know why we were in Ithaca, Spencer is in his master's program at Cornell University. In the last semester. Yeah, and he is, uh, right now he's in his last quarter. Like he's literally, right now is his last quarter of Cornell. So he's graduating with his master's in engineering um, and then a specialty in electrical as well. And that is coming up in May the end 24th. of May. So super proud of the kid. Um, he's actually working for a company that paid for the Cornell education. They're actually Thank giving a God. salary while he's there. <laughs> so he's on his own. He's a productive adult. I can't, and he's on the dean's list. Everything he does is top notch all through college, all through high school. He's always been on the dean's list and he's just an amazing kid. I couldn't possibly be more proud of that kid right I don't talk about it you ever. know I don't know he never talks about it true so we get to Ithaca <laughs> he never shuts we're up we're staying in uh, uh, we're staying at Spencer's house there which is it's on campus but it's not part of the dorms as he's got his own apartment and he's right next door to the waterfall which I did a short hike over there walking him to the bus one day because he has a car but he often takes the bus so we hiked over to the bus stop. I hiked through the down through the waterfalls and the a stream that's there, which is part of the uh, Cornell botanical studies. They're, they've got a lot of stuff they're doing there with that and water treatment and all that. And then they ended up... Um, I, the, the photos are ridiculously beautiful. I was like, geez, Louise, I got some good photos there. And the... Um, then I hiked back. We had a. There was one day um, that we ended up going to the uh, pumpkin patch because we always used to do that when he was a kid. So we went hiked over to the pumpkin patch and looked at all their flowers and their app. They had I think like a hundred varieties of apples growing yeah. in that one yeah. farm, which I didn't know. It turns out there's like 150 apples versions of apples that are out there. Yeah. Which this is something we know from living in. Gravenstein area. Gravenstein apples are largely uh, grown apple sauce. in Sebastopol, yep. which is where I was raised. In fact, I cannot believe this year is our 30th, is it our 30th or our 40th anniversary? Gra graduation. Uh, 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 40th anniversary of being out of high school. <laughs> and we're actually having a celebration in September, so... I, I may have to go nice. to it. So yeah. they were just announcing it. Hans was talking about it. I was like, ooh, I need to make, I need to block some time to go say hi. Um, anyway, uh, I don't, I just lost what we were talking Oh, apples. So Johnny Appleseed isn't just a cartoon character. He's a real guy that used to go around the country planting orchards of apples for settlers so that as they were traveling across the country, they had something to eat when they arrived. Yep. That's why he planted so all the orchards are from, largely from Johnny Appleseed, which in Sebastopol, there's a lot of orchards, which actually makes me sad because a lot of the or orchards are being ripped down now to be made room for grapes. And I like the cattle and the apples where I was from because I used to sit in the, in the orchard right next to our house, which, and I'd eat apples while I was doing homework in the tree. Yep. So it was fun. So anyway, we uh, we got to drive around Ithaca. What did you think of the roads in Ithaca? That doesn't stick in my head. Oh, really? No, it really doesn't. What does stick in my head is that phenomenal library in on the Cornell campus. Oh. It was astonishing. And um, stories high. What, four stories high? Yep, I've got photos obviously playing here. Yeah, um, that I'm a bookworm, and I've got my own little very inadequate library. Um, that well, is it's sixty boxed boxes up in of Albuquerque. Five books. 
a little library, you've got 60 boxes of books. Yeah. But, yeah, there, that, and that library has been in a lot of movies. Um, and it's really, really beautiful. It's the Dean's Library. And it's not the one that most kids study in, but they do. Just not, that's not, the, there's another library that's kind of more utilitarian, yeah. I should say. It's so beautiful, though. The, the architecture, the wood carvings. Amazing, and of course, that smell of books when you walk through the door. I love it. I love libraries. When you had to kind of do some work to get in there because there's multiple sets of stairs, yeah. and she made it, and no rails. No rails. There was no handrails. Right. So it was, you were holding on to either me or Spencer at every given moment going up these bloody great yeah. staircases. Yeah. But you made it. I did. Because you were determined. Yep. And we kept co coaxing or coaxing you like it's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it. But we had also we went to the Sage Chapel. That's more than a chapel. Gorgeous. Yeah, and that chapel, Martin Luther King spoke there. Um, yep. In fact, the oldest fraternity is out of Cornell in the United States, Ivy League. But that was um, the oldest fraternity that was and that still today has the strongest academic rigor required to be a member of it which is a black fraternity and obviously they let other people in it now but they that fraternity has always been hyper focused on education and marks making sure that you're you're you merit recognition and interestingly enough we were talking with Spencer about the merit requirements for Cornell they're still based on merit not um, what do you call uh, their meritocracy is how they run it, not off of, I can't think of the word. Oh, I don't know what you're trying to Race, think. gender. It's not oh, a race, gender no, requirement. No, it, no. You have to be able to make the marks yeah. in order to get in there. And the grading system, they're not giving you leeway. Either you made the mark or you didn't make the mark. They're, they're very much a rigor-based um, meritocracy. So that's nice to hear. And, that, and I will just say really quickly, you know, there's a lot of stuff that Cornell's been in the in the news about recently um, with all the stuff with the, the war and stuff. all that stuff. Yeah. But I will tell you that when that stuff started, the faculty was immediate. There was one person that was on the steps saying stuff that was really, really inappropriate against a particular race of people. And that was immediately shut down that day. It was. The guy that was, the people that were doing the, the stuff that was threatening or violent that guy was immediately turned over to the FBI so that with that stuff as much negative as you hear about Cornell it was shut down very quickly and there was not a there was not all the stuff that the media is talking about in the news you didn't see that in a real person standing foot boots on the ground perspective that wasn't yeah. something you saw it was all shut down like that so that was something that made me feel better about Cornell because again I wasn't going by hearsay what the media was reporting but inside what was really going on so that was good to hear right yeah it was so the other thing is we got to drive around we well we walked around the campus itself which is spectacular campus so there's some videos here and pictures yeah but also um the uh neighborhood the spencer these photos of these houses that you're looking at right now are actually the homes on the street that spencer lives on so his house is not the caliber of those. It's, an, it's a little bit older house and it is an apartment complex. But it is, that was a beautiful neighborhood. I was like, oh was. my goodness. And that's, I could, just from the stature of the houses and the space that they had in their yards, I was like, wow, this place is spectacular. Totally gorgeous. But the roads, they were awful. Were they? <laughs> oh my gosh. I was too busy looking. They were bizarre. Like it, they had no rhyme and reason. They had a straight road that was really like chopped up in bits. So you'd have to, you're on a straight road, but you had to go that way to go keep going because it didn't line up at all. <laughs> and they'd have these little weird, weird little side curve roads that you, they had a stop sign, but you were expected not to stop. And the person behind you was honking if you did stop because nobody stops. So I was like always getting in trouble because I'm following normal law. And they weren't. And I was like a granny driving safe and, the, and steep, steep roads in a lot of areas. So 
it was very weird driving around there. But and then we got to celebrate Spencer's birthday there before we headed out. Yep. We actually celebrated a little bit early because we had to get to a convention, which we'll talk about on the next episode. But it was fun. We had we really had a good time. And then you bought some artwork for Spencer's house because it really was lacking that. Yeah, he had nothing on the wall. For his walls. birthday. So for his birthday, I got him a couple of, um, they were just prints. I mean, it was not expensive, but it enhanced it a little and bit. And I got my son a box full of Nespresso pods and an espresso machine and all the fixings for cappuccino and espresso. So Nespresso, I really like your coffee, but I was, uh, and then I gave him some of my yellow spruce coffee, so he had some of that. Um, but it was fun. It was really fun spending some time with him and getting caught up. At one point, it, it was we. It was just Spencer and I. We went to dinner and we were talking, kind of, because you know he. You're going to Ivy League. You're kind of going in engineering. It's kind of the cream of the crop of the, kind of the world's academics. And there is everybody that I know that is worth their salt has a degree of wondering is this really something I can do when you get to that level I mean when you look at the people that are mentoring Spencer and who mentors them you've got Nobel Peace Prize winners and Supreme yep. Court justices from there and and people that are movers and shakers in industry like really really high uh, it's just rare air so listening to some of the stories and I'm, I'm watching my son not just survive it but thrive like the people around him are recognizing how good Spencer is at what he does, which is not new. Everybody that's watched the kid grow up is all expecting wonder th wonderful things from him because he's always been that kid that is, and his giftedness, I think we're all giftedness in one way or another. But Everybody the, has something special. Oh, all of us. But yeah. the thing that makes him special is his dedication and his work ethic. Because you can have all the talent in the world and end up nowhere. Or you can have no talent and end up somewhere. Well, Spencer has talent and he has the rigor that's involved. So I'm really proud of Spencer. Can't say enough for him. And he's graduating with his master's and I'm coming up and just three months away and it's like, wow. So that was everything for Ithaca. Anything I'm forgetting to talk about? Mom? Nope. I think you're if good. you think of anything you'd like us to talk about, and it could be personal topics or relationship topics or whatever, email us at fanbase at mumand.me. So M-U-M-A-N-D dot me, M-E. So fanbase at mumand.me. Um, if you like this show or like any of our shows, please drop a note in the comments. Uh, you can email us there. You can uh, private message us share our posts, like, follow, go to uh, ex, uh, Experian, uh, not Experian, oh, bugger, the name just, find us everywhere, because we're <laughs> everywhere on social media, but I will tell you, our last episode was actually our longest episode that we've done, but I've had more feedback on that episode than any episode we've received, so lots of private messages and emails talking about how much they enjoyed the topic of talking about family, so... Um, friends. It, friends. So it, and really, which become family. Yeah. So this is also, I also have to mention that last, that last episode, I, I upload, I finished uploading a different thing for work. And then I started uploading that on Saturday night at 10 p.m. And I did not, on Wednesday evening at 10 p.m., it still had not loaded more than, I think I'd reached 40%. So I all of a sudden, oh, he's going to fall off of that any bloody minute. It's okay. He's going to get a rude awakening his little in a minute. Oh, I just don't want him to hit his head. I don't want him in the fire. There. So uh, it anyway, we, I ended up, that it finally failed on Wednesday evening after five days of upload. I told him to dump it. And then I started Didn't again. I? <laughs> and I started again at 10 p.m. and it was loaded by midnight, right? Yep. Two hours it took to finally yep. upload. So... I was grateful that got done. So I'm going to try to get this one edited and uploaded and anything else. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about our trek down through Oklahoma and Nashville on into 
uh, Texas. So we will see. Got an interesting story about Oklahoma. I don't remember what that is, but we'll talk about it next time. (laughs) It's something I'm sure that it's not my ass hanging out of the the window. Oh, no, that was bridge. I don't know. I don't remember what it is. She'll remind me in a minute. We'll talk about it next time, right? Yep. Okay. Cheers. And remember, everywhere is an hour away from somewhere. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.